for today, I'm going to work questions seven through 14. So question seven and eight, it says, name the vertex and the sides of each angle. Okay, so on an angle, it looks like a corner. Okay, so an angle or quarters. Now vertex, pay attention to the first letter of the word vertex. The first letter, it looks like a corner, right? Vertex, the first letter looks like a corner. In reality, the vertex of an angle is the point at the corner. We, we talk about last unit, right, in, on our unit zero. We talk about last unit that when we, when we call the point, we call it by a letter only, right? We talked about that last week. So I'm going to say the vertex is the point K. It's basically the point at the corner, at the corner of our angle. So in this case, A, K. Now the sides, keep in mind plural, an angle has two sides, and the sides are going to be rays that start from the vertex. So I'm going to have the ray that starts at K and go through J. And then I'm also going to have a ray that starts at K and goes through L. Notice how I'm looking at this side and this side. So the sides of an angle are rays. Sometimes they're just segments, right? Because an angle does stop a certain point. So sometimes are are segments, sometimes rays. In this case, because of these arrows, that tells me that the sides go on forever. So in this case, are going to be rays. Let me take a look at question number eight. The vertex. The vertex of the angle, the point at the corner. So in this case, it's going to be my point H. That's the vertex. Now, my sides, the sides of the angle are two rays that start at the vertex. So I'm going to say H through G. So it's a ray that starts at H and goes through G. So that one. And then the other side is going to be here, this one. Now, wrongly, so let me answer this wrong. The, the, the second ray, if you call it IH, that's wrong. You can tell why, right? I'm using the letters I and H, but IH is wrong. Now, the reason why I'm calling it wrong because that ray says you start at I and you go through H. Well, that's not the case. So let me erase this. It's, that's not the right ray. The correct ray will be HI because I start at H, right, the vertex, you have to start from the vertex, you start at H and you go through I. So the order in this case does matter. For rays, it does matter. All right, I said I'm gonna start 14. So let's take a look at question number nine. Yesterday we talked about a little bit of angles when we talk about our congruent statements. Now this angle, question number nine, I'm gonna be able to write it, so I'm gonna be able to name it four different ways. So name each angle in four ways. One of them, I see a number there. One of them, I'm going to call it angle four. I'm going to use that number. Now, I will say that's the measurement if my four had a little circle on the top that we call degrees. I will call it four degrees if it had the little zero on the top, but it doesn't. So if it doesn't have the degree symbol, it's not a measurement. It is a name. So that's angle four. Another way I can call this, I can call this angle L. I'm using the vertex. When you name an angle, you can name it using the vertex, just the vertex. But I have to write this four different ways. So there's two more. Now the other two, I'm gonna use all three letters of my angle, all three letters. However, the vertex, in this case L, has to stay in the middle. So order kind of matters, kind of. I'm going to use all three letters, but L has to be in the middle. So I can call this angle KLM, or I can call this angle MLK. I said kind of matters. The only thing that matters is that L is in the center. The K and the M, it doesn't matter which one you write first. Only the vertex. Well, there you go. There's four ways. Let's take a look at question number 10. I'm gonna call this angle five. I use the number. I'm gonna call this angle I because I'm using the vertex. 
And then I'm gonna use all three letters, make sure the vertex is in the center. So I can call this angle H I J, or I can call this angle J I H. Make sure the vertex is in the center. Another way I can have you guys practice, the way I'm gonna do this in your homework, I'm gonna give you guys an angle and I'm gonna give you four names and I'm asking, choose the wrong name for this angle. So, all right, let me think of the four possible ways we can write this. I can call this angle three. I can call this angle J, because I'm using the vertex or using all three letters, make sure J is in the center. So I can call this angle K, J, I, or I can call this angle I, J, K. All right, from this four cases, I'm on looking at my choices now, A, B, C, D. One of those choices is not in my choices here. Okay, the one I don't see here is A. I don't see J, K, I. I, I have to have the vertex in the center. I have to have J in the center, so J, K, I is wrong. If you notice the other three choices, angle K, J, I, angle three, angle J are correct. Again, I'm gonna have you identify which one is wrong. So you need to know what are the four possible ways. Looking at number 12, the four possible ways I can call this angle, I can call it angle one, I can call it angle L, I can call this, using three letters, make sure the vertex is in the center. I can call it angle MLK or angle KLM. I don't think LKM is correct. Remember here, I'm asking choose the wrong name for this angle. So from the four choices, one of them is wrong. Which one is it? In this case, choice C. Now we're gonna learn how to measured an angle. I'm gonna use this protractor, right? When you guys go to the store, you guys have seen this at the stores, protractors. One interesting part of a protractor, let me highlight this circle. That circle, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it at the vertex of my angle. And when I said angle, I'm gonna measure the aperture of my angle. Now, interesting, you know, my my protractor, I see numbers on the outside. Let me highlight the numbers. I see these numbers out here. And then there's some numbers on the inside. I'm looking at these numbers right here. I'm going to see where do my sides of my angle cross the protractor. When I look on the on the left side, if I'm using the numbers on the outside, it seems like number 30. When I'm using the number in the inside, it looks like 150. Okay. Now look on the other side of your, your angle. If I'm looking at the number on the outside, it's right in between 110 and 120. So I'm gonna call that 115. If I'm looking at the angles on the inside, it's in between 70 and 60. So I'm gonna call that 65. Now for me to find out what's the measurement of my angle, I'm gonna subtract my numbers. However, so big however, however, I can only use outside numbers or inside numbers. So if I'm gonna use outside numbers, I'm gonna say 115, minus 30. I want this to be positive. So start with the big number, 115 minus 30. Now, if I'm gonna use inside numbers, I'm gonna go 150 minus 65. Again, use outside numbers, outside numbers only, or inside numbers only. Which one do you choose? It really does not matter. Your result should be 85. This angle is 85 degrees. If you go 115 minus 30, yep, you get 85. If you go 150 minus 65, yep, you get 85 as well. Again, outside numbers only or inside numbers only. It doesn't matter which one you use. 
just don't mix them, okay? Let's take a look at another case here. Hmm, I, here I see a bunch of segments and I see a different type of protractor. But now here, I need to do measurement of angle AOC. So let's pay attention to this. Measurement of angle AOC. That little M at the front, that means measurement. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting A with O with C. Okay, so now I see my angle. If I'm looking at the outside numbers, outside numbers, my numbers are 35, and then here are 1 15th, outside numbers only. Now, if I'm looking at the inside numbers only, I get 145, and then here I get 65. Okay, so if I'm gonna use outside numbers, I'm gonna go 1 15th minus 35. I start with the big number because I want my answer to be positive. So 35 minus 115 gives me negative. Instead, go 115 minus 35. So if you're using outside numbers, 115 minus 35. If you're using inside numbers, 145 minus 65. No matter which one you use, your results should be 85 degrees. So in your homework, I'm gonna use both types of protractors. The one on the left, is the one that you usually see at the stores. So that's why I provided that one. But I want you to focus on outside numbers only or inside numbers only. So make sure you know how to use a protractor.